Hey guys, welcome to part three of Three Ways to Slice and Dice in Ableton. My name is Ryan, I'm from rm-sounds.com, and if you haven't checked out the first two videos, I highly recommend you watch those before this one, but if you want a quick summary, I basically was just demonstrating a few ways to chop up breaks using MIDI programming. Um, in this third video, though, I'm going to be getting away from the MIDI and actually getting back to the old school method of just chopping up audio on the timeline. And uh, to be honest with you, this is actually my favorite. So we were working with a funky drummer loop. I'm just going to delete that MIDI track and reactivate this clip. So this is a clip we were working with. Very common. Um, I've already cleaned up the edges of it to get it all in time. Um, I repitched it to match our tempo, and so we're all good to go. If you need any help with that stuff, you can check out my first video. Um, but what I do uh, when I want to chop with audio is I just copy out the loop through the whole song. Just keep going with it. Get yourself lots of content to chop. Just like so. And then I will go back and I will just start chopping away. Now, it is important to uh, learn your keyboard shortcuts. They will be a huge time saver. A um, couple important ones I will try and go over as I explain each technique. Now, obviously one of the most important parts when you're chopping breaks is the actual chopping. So what I like to do is, um, you know, it, it does help to keep the grid activated. Sometimes it's a little tougher when you have swing in your grooves, but uh, uh, one big one is Command E. Command E is your split function that uh, lets you split a clip um, either in one spot if you have the cursor just lying around like this or if you highlight something it will split the entire or both edges of what's been highlighted so this is really good because you can just split like your snare out or something and then hold down alt and drag it to another point in the arrangement and this way you can just get cool snare patterns all over the place So, sounds like crap, this probably won't be great, but it's uh, for demonstration only, right? Um, so, yeah, you can you can do your Command E, um, just get your kicks and your snares all over the place and start mangling stuff up. Um, grab your hats and get them. Um, another, another powerful composition tool is silence as well, though. If you just delete something, it does sound cool. But anyway, I like to use Command E as well when I want to, um, you know, perform an individual clip function on something. If I want to make this snare reversed or something, I'll Command E, double click, and hit reverse. Um, same goes for if you want to, you know, change your volume or whatever you want to do. If you want to time stretch one of your snares, um, this is uh, also another fun. Um, IDM effect so that one's already been split sorry and if I go for time stretching effects I like to use texture turn the flux down to zero I don't care about your variation I want it to be very green sounding and then just stretch it out like crazy turn off my grid and get that lined up right at the beginning there like now I got a cool time stretch snare sound That's cool. Um, what else? Oh yeah, if you want to get like your your granular glitches and stuff, often I'll just turn off my my grid altogether and just select a little bit, Command E, and then another one that's important, Command D, is duplicate. That'll get you your glitchy sounds. Actually, if you're using duplicate, you don't even have to um, select Command E first. You can just do Command D immediately, and it'll start duplicating. So yeah, you can uh, get some cool stuff like that. And this is all um, linear uh, chopping of the waveform uh, that I'm doing here, and that's all good. You can oh another thing uh, I didn't talk about is um, 
pitch shifting. If you want to uh, play around with your pitch, you can either leave warp mode on and switch to anything other than re-pitch. And you can change the pitch while keeping the time in, in sync. So you can get some fun. Uh, I like to do uh, pitch. Like I like to make the pitch go up over a series of rolls or whatever. It's kind of tedious in Ableton. It would be nice if there was like a pitch envelope or something. Although there is something similar to that if you use envelopes. So that, that was one way of doing it where I switched the transposition on each individual sample. Um, but another way you could do it would be to just duplicate a bunch. And then here's another hotkey, Command J consolidates. So that'll take a group of a whole bunch of clips and turn them into one clip. And then from there you can actually, uh, if you have another warp mode on, you can go to like a pitch envelope, transposition pitch envelope, and you can just draw a line going down or up or whatever you want to do. So lots of, lots of cool things you can do there. Um, I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty much it for the slice and dice bit of it. And uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about is the way that I get uh, a whole bunch of cool effects processing on my breaks, because that is, uh, as we all know, a big part of IDM and, and break core and stuff like that. Um, and the way I do that is I actually add another audio track. And I consider this audio track to be my um, my effects track or whatever. And what I'll do is I'll just say I want to, you know, for this section here, for this little snare transposition bit, I just uh, consolidate that so it's one. But say I want to do maybe a filter sweep on that. I'll drag it down into the second effect track, and then I will put an effect on there. Um, so if we grab our auto filter and click on cut off, if I'm going a little quick, I apologize. A lot of this stuff is in the manual, though. I highly check, or I highly recommend you check it out. But what I did was I just I selected the cutoff, which brought up my automation curve here for cutoff, and then I just drew a little line going down. So, if you want to hear what that sounds like, maybe a little too drastic. Maybe I should be doing it the other way, just to go with the pitch. But then once I've done that, I just um, freeze the track and flatten it. And this will get rid of the effect in the track and it will apply it to that clip. So then I can bring it back up into my original audio track and it still has the filtered sound. Then I can pick a different part and command E that, drag it down, and maybe put some crazy reverb on there or whatever. And just freeze that. Flatten that. Bring it back up. Maybe put a little flange on this or something. Yeah, freeze that, flatten that, take it back up. But anyway, that's how you get some uh, really cool break sounding stuff happening and chopping the audio in the arrangement. That is by far my favorite way to do it these days. Um, but that is the third way to slice and dice in Ableton. Play around with it yourself. I'm sure I missed a whole bunch of cool techniques that I usually use. Uh, I, pr I probably forgot some stuff, but that is the basic concept. All right, take it easy.